I was gonna say as the demo reel begins to play, but I guess actually the demo reel just finished up. Um, so, oh, nope, didn't want to click on the credits. Wait, what? What is... Are they playing D&D? &D? <laughs> oh, I forgot to turn on the sound. There we go. Where are the Cheetos? They're right next to you. I cast a spell. Where's the Mountain Dew? In the fridge, duh. I want to cast a spell. What the hell? Yes, you can have a Mountain Dew. Just go get it. I can cast any of these, right? On the list? Yes, any any of the first level ones. I'm going to get a soda. Anyone want one? Hey, Graham, I'm not in the room, right? What room? I want to cast magic missile. A room where he's casting all these spells. This is fantastic. I have, anything yet. I have no I idea what's going on right now, but magic missile. Why I'm assuming these are creatures from the game, but I, I'm attacking the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> an elf in front of you Whoa, that's me right he's wearing a, a a brown tunic and he has gray hair and blue eyes no i don't i have gray eyes let me see that sheet well it says i have well it says i have blue but i decided i wanted gray eyes whatever okay you, you guys can talk to each other now if you want hello hello i am Galstaff. this is awkward as hell flight. Then how come you had to cast magic missile? <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you guys are being attacked. Do I see that? Hell? How long I is this skit? Side by the tavern. Cool, I get drunk. <sighs> there are there are seven ogres surrounding you. How could they surround us? I had Morton Kaiden's magical watchdog cast. No, you didn't. I'm getting drunk. Are there any girls there? I totally did. You asked me if I wanted any equipment before this adventure, and I said no. But I need material components for all my spells, so I cast Morton Kaiden's faithful watchdog. But you never actually cast it. Roll the dice to see. I'm just watching this drunk. now. <sighs> yeah, you are. Are there any girls there? I did, though. I completely said when you asked me. No, you didn't. You didn't actually say that you were casting the spell. So now there's ogres, okay? Ogres? Man, I got an ogre slaying knife. It's got a plus nine against ogres. You're not there. You're getting drunk. Okay, but if there's any girls there, <laughs> I want to do that. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was written by Dan Harmon. <laughs> what am I being killed with? That was a Dan Harmon skit. The prophecy Murad has made it come true in the end. By this hand, I will. <laughs> How many skits are there? They got like a blooper reel after the credits. That's fantastic. Okay, I, I didn't expect that. <laughs> I did not know that was gonna happen, but that's hilarious. All right, the controls are a little weird here. It's hard to go like one element at a time because it just automatically flips through them very quickly. Uh, yeah, we'll turn on vibration. Toggles confirm pop up for entering solo mode. I, mean, I don't know what the hell that is, but sure, whatever. All right, accept changes, sure, whatever. So yeah, point is, I have no idea what this game is. Apparently Dan Harmon did something for it. Um, it's an RPG in the back of the box says that it's a must have PS2 RPG. That's all I really know. That and I've got it for like four bucks. So I paid next to nothing for it. And yeah, we'll see what it is. I obviously love RPG games. So I'm a little excited to try it out. I hope it's as good as the back of the box wants me to believe. But I don't know if it's actually going to be or not. <laughs> there's a there's a pretty large part of me that says it's probably not going to be that great. But I am Joseph of we'll Sina. see. Joseph of Massad. Farmer, cotter, plowman. Sahugani, Summoner. Nine years ago, I destroyed the village of Saran with a power I could neither control nor understand. A power passed down through generations for thousands upon thousands of years. A power I never asked for and never wanted. Nine years ago, raiders attacked Saran. To save my village, I unleashed the demon and the demon massacred all in its path, the raiders. My friends, my family. The survivors blamed me, and who else were they to blame? I wore the ring. I called forth the demon. And so I left the ruins of Saran in exile and outcast. But I was not alone. 
My companion was a vagabond named Iago, an old beggar who had come to Saran the year before looking for the child born with the mark of the summoner. Looking for me. Iago said he'd teach me how to use my gift, how to use the ring that only those born with the mark could use. And now we were both vagabonds, hated and feared. We came to the village of Masad, and I threw the ring down a well. I told Yago to go away and never trouble me again with talk of prophecies and destinies. I was finished with my power. I swore on the graves of all who perished in Saran that I would never summon again. Okay, so our village was being attacked, but the one thing and oh, to escape was the one thing that's not done. Looking for me, and that is where my story begins. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, our village was being attacked. In an attempt to save it, we used our powers to summon a demon, and the demon murdered everybody, including our friends, people that didn't want to. You want to play this game because of that skit alone? Honestly, that was pretty hilarious, man. <laughs> 300 years after the Medivan conquest, 1,000 years after the fall of Ikemos, and 12,000 years after the Third Arenagath, and the okay. death of Urarth, god of the Sudani. We got some world building going on here. 12,000 years after other things that have happened. I don't know if this is actually part of a series of games or if this is like a standalone thing. I'm not honestly sure. Murad the Usurper, Emperor of Orenia, a realm far to the north across the sea, invaded the shores of the kingdom of Medivh. Led by the infamous Four Riders, Murad's soldiers laid waste to the villages along the Dahu River. One night, they came to Masad. The soldiers were looking for a boy with a mark on his hand. Alright, so... Of the summoner. They're here looking for us. Cool, cool. Big surprise, right? We're big, bad, rare summoner dude that can do amazing yet destructive things. So a lot of people want us for probably to make us do their will, I'm assuming. This tutorial will explain the basic controls for summoner. You can quit this or any other tutorial at any time by pressing triangle. Joseph can be moved using the left analog stick to move forward, push the stick forward away from you. Pulling the stick back toward you causes Joseph to move toward the camera. Ooh. <laughs> Pushing the stick left or right makes Joseph run in that direction. While Joseph is running, the camera automatically positions itself behind him. You can also manually control the camera using the right analog stick. Cool, cool. Moving in the right analog stick forward or backward zooms the camera in or out respectively. Very nice. Pushing left or right on the stick rotates the camera around Joseph. Imagine that. You can switch camera modes by depressing. Pressing down on. Why not just say pressing? Whatever. The left analog stick. The following camera modes are available. Low, the camera remains close to the ground. High, the camera remains above Joseph. Auto, the camera automatically switches. All very standard stuff. Pressing down the right analog stick causes the camera to automatically swing behind Joseph. Start button pause of the game. Okay, do we have a menu? No menu at the moment. Oh, okay, yep, yep, yep. So we have the map. That's very nice. We can lock the view. We have our equipment screen. We currently have one health tonic. Some sort of sword here. Just a short sword, I suppose. And some clothing. A tunic. Very nice. What else do we have? We have our character screen. Uh, again, it's weird how the controls kind of like flip through things so quickly. Chain added blow. Standard secondary attack. Plus damage with amount of damage taken. Oh, so are these like... I think these are maybe moves that we can do. Maybe we can press, press like, the uh, the D-pad to do different attacks or something like that. Um, we have uh, standard stuff here. We got level, HP, AP, speed, blah, 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 resistances, AI, melee. Oh, okay, so this, like, we can gain party members or something at some point, and we can tell them to fill a certain role, it looks like, maybe. Very nice. All right, so I think that's probably all we need to know at the moment. The camera is currently on... High, auto, low. We'll do auto. Auto seems fair. Uh, already, we got some weird popping off in the distance here, but that's okay. We can get over that sort of thing. Not that big of a deal, and when you're playing a bunch of old retro games and whatnot, popping is the standard 
Can we interact with the people? It doesn't seem like it. The frame rate feels a little off on this game. It's just just first impression here. Like everything feels a little uh, a little jerky, right? But let's see. Dialogue tutorial. This is Joseph's friend Mullick. And Joseph can talk to nearby friendly characters by pressing X. The game pauses. A cursor appears. Blah blah blah. You can cycle through all characters in range with the left analog stick. Okay. Characters with important information have double exclamation parts above their heads. Once you have selected the character with whom you would like to speak, press X again to initiate a conversation. Go ahead and talk to Moloch. Weird, I guess. Uh, okay. We worked in the fields, planting weed and rye. The day's shadows grew long. Over Nato's Hill, I saw the ride, them ride four horsemen with an army of butchers close behind. Well, that sucks. <laughs> When Joseph is talking to a character, the dialogue appears in the top half of the window. The bottom half of the window contains a list of relevant topics that we can ask about. So, pretty standard uh, uh, dialogue system here. Although, at the time on PS2, this was probably pretty neat to have, right? Because you didn't really get this sort of thing on console. I'm sure there were other games that did it, but I'm thinking like Outer Scrolls on the Xbox 360. I guess uh, the original Xbox had Morrowind, right? Been reading more of Strixhaven. They include fellow NPC students that have their own backstories. Very cool. Can they, like, join the party, Nate? Or are they just kind of their own separate thing? Just kind of, like, world filler building type of stuff. Uh, when a topic has been covered, it is removed from the topic list. New topics are added to the list as more information is uncovered. Access to new topics can also be gained after completing quests or talking to other characters. Very standard stuff. Moloch has quite a bit to tell Joseph. Go ahead and continue talking to him. You can stop the conversation at any time by choosing the farewell topic or just pressing triangle. Very nice. Horsemen, you say? Half men, half beasts, villains from a bard song. They carved poor Ruag in half. They attacked us with arrows of flame. He who survived are too scared to stay and too scared to run. Well, I mean, you kind of have to do one or the other. Remember that many characters in Summoner have important and interesting things to say. Talk to everyone you can. I mean, that's kind of standard RPG affair, right? If you're playing an RPG and not talking to everyone, you're probably doing something wrong. Uh, no, please don't. Can we, uh, can we, can we, nope. Okay, we just have to watch that dude get murdered. Cool. Uh, <laughs> this Iranian scout is about to attack Joseph. Joseph will have to fight back. You can attack enemies by pressing X when they are within range. When you press X, the game pauses and a cursor appears under the nearest enemy in range. You can cycle through all enemies with the left analog stick. The red bar over the enemy represents its current hit points, which decrease as he takes... Yeah, we know what hit points are. After you've selected the enemy you'd like to attack, press X again. Once a target has been selected, just automatically engages the enemy. He continues to fight until he or his foe runs out of HP, or you issue him another command. So it kind of fights on its own, and then we just do special abilities kind of deal. That makes me think of Final Fantasy VII Remake, probably because I'm playing through that game right now as well. But they have a auto mode. The red bar next to Joseph's port switch represents his HP. If Joseph's HP drops to zero, he's dead. If everyone in your group is incapacitated, the game ends. If an enemy attacks Joseph and you do not respond, Joseph automatically draws his weapon and defends himself. During combat, numbers appear over the character's head, numbers in which represent damage to enemies. Uh, yellow represent damage to Joseph. Numbers in blue represent percentage modifiers to that character's attack. You receive a bonus for attacking a creature from above or behind, and penalized for attacking from below. Game will now unpause, and we can do stuff. Cool, cool, okay. So, draw your sword, and start attacking, Joseph! Can we, can we D-pad? Too fast? What? Too slow. Okay, so there seems to be some sort of timing that we need to do with the, the with the keys so there's some something to that you can't just press a d-pad button and have him do the move because every time i try to hit it was saying like too fast too slow whatever so some sort of trickery there i'm sure a tutorial will pop up at some point when the guard died he dropped his weapon you can pick up nearby items on the ground by pressing x you can see a targeting cursor like the one used to target characters but it appears on the item that is closest to you as with targeting characters you can use the left analog stick to select something else during battle joseph may take damage joseph has a spell called heal that he can cast to restore hp to himself or others in his party you can access the spells menu by pressing circle very nice joseph can also use healing potions that are in inventory you can access the inventory screen by pressing triangle okay so here we have different spells uh, so, uh, looks like... Oh, Jesus. This is the spells menu. Along the top of the menu are the six different circles of spells. Heal, Dark, Energy, Holy, Fire, and Ice. Uh, that should just be Holy Fire, not Holy, Comma, Fire. 
They can travel with you, but it's suggested not to allow them with the combat for encounters, but for other stuff, sure. Ah, okay, okay. So they're not really, like, meant to fight, but they're there more for flavor and just to talk to other NPCs and gather information, world building, that sort of stuff. Very nice, very nice. This is, yeah, yeah, you can scroll between the various circles by moving left or right. You can select spells within a circle by moving up or down. At level 1, Joseph has access to the heal spell. To cast heal, press either X or circle when the spell is highlighted. A window, is all, a window also appears, listing the available targets for the spell. A spell that helps Joseph and his allies can be used only on them, while an offense spell can target only enemies. You can scroll through the target list by moving up or down. Once the target has been selected, press X. Using a spell costs AP. So AP is just MP. Or maybe it's like a combo for combat or melee abilities and spells. That would make sense. As Joseph's skills in the spell circle increases, he gains access to more powerful spells in that circle. Higher level spells cost more AP. You can see the current level of your spell circles by pressing triangle. Okay, so, I mean, this is all seems like pretty standard affair, right? Okay, so, right now we're highlighted, so then we can press cast on Joseph. And, did it work? There it goes. Now it's working. There's even a relationship mechanic, and they each have a boon or bane, Nate says. Yeah, I uh, I remember seeing something about uh, the them trying to add more kind of rewards and more to the non-combat aspects of D&D 5e, because that, in that aspect, it was always just kind of left up to the DM and the players on how they wanted to do it. There was never any, like, real rules for, for non-combat encounters. So I'm guessing Strixhaven maybe is kind of leaning into those mechanics that they're trying to add. So we found a worn katana. It's a well-used sword that inflicts only a small amount of damage, but does 25 skill required sword. I, I mean, pick it up. And presumably now we can go to our inventory and equip it. I do want to just increase the volume a little bit. All right, inventory. So we have a worn katana. We can change through item types with circle. That's pretty decent, I suppose. Okay, there's a whole loading screen. I guess I had to load in that model. <laughs> so the damage of this one's 35 with a speed of 1. The katana has a damage of 25 with a speed of 0.63. So it seems like the short sword is actually the better weapon. So we're going to go ahead and keep that one equipped for now kind of weird that it needs a loading screen just to switch weapons but at least that you can actually see the changes on the character models right a lot of old games didn't have that sort of mechanic talk to asic apparently i lived a fool and now i'll die a fool an old martyr's dream made me fight i beg of you bring the sword to my nephew eris your nephew eris eris my grandfather's grandfather made this sword and died long ago on nido's hill he was falcon eyes standard bearer and the greatest warrior in our village. The blade is ancient, but I've cared for it well. Look how it gleams in the sun. Aren't you, like, dying right now? You're a little long-winded for somebody dying on the ground. We must flee. Lenali? Never. The blood of my ancestors sanctified this soil. I will die here or live forever, but the dead have no use for swords. Give this blade to my nephew. He lives in Lenali. Do you see the serpent coiled around the hilt? Quest journal updated. Okay. Can we use the sword in the meantime? We cannot equip it too bad. Oh, well. All right. Keep exploring a little bit here. Uh, so there was the map. Do we... Okay, cool. So the map kind of uncovers as we walk around. Very nice. We can't seem to zoom in or anything. That's fine. And I don't see any cursors, like, telling us which way to go. Which, honestly, for the most part, I'm fine with. I, uh, I've been pretty vocal in the past about my dislike of having, like systems and games that just tell you exactly where to go i would rather have some sense of exploration to it than to have a um a gps basically give you turn by turn directions on what to do so i am perfectly fine with uh with this as long as it gives you some sort of hints on where to go like map markers uh with village names or or something 
And Nate says, yeah, it has some awesome stuff to fluff up, fluff up non-combat encounters from what I've seen. It doesn't plan for a lot of combat, encourages exploring and social interaction. Y'all can even pick out extracurricular activities for your character, and there's a good bit of player control for some of the new mechanics. Very cool. Very cool. I'm interested to see how that all works, because uh, obviously I would love to include some of the, uh, the non-combat stuff into the campaign that I'm currently running as well. Chain attacks can be used only in melee combat and cost ability points to perform. Notice the chain symbol that appears over Joseph's head just as he is about to swing at his opponent. Chain attacks can be executed only while this symbol is visible. To perform a chain attack, press one of the four directional buttons. You cho your choice you you choose determines which special attack. The direction you choose. Lord almighty, I was like, is that a translation error? I'm confused. No, I'm just bad at reading. That's all. Pushing up causes Joseph to perform an added blow attack. If successful, this attack inflicts normal damage. Pushing down causes Joseph to perform a desperation attack. If successful, successful, this attack inflicts damage proportional to the HPs Joseph has lost. The lower his remaining HP, the more damage he inflicts. Pushing left, so up is regular. Down is uh, desperation for whenever we're dying ourselves. Pushing left causes Joseph to perform a confusion. If successful, this attack drains AP, so left drains AP. Right causes Joseph to perform a push attack. If successful, this attack pushes the opponent backwards and gives Joseph more time to perform the next chain. Once Joseph performed a chain attack often enough, he gains access to new chains. You can, you can assign these chain attacks to the directional buttons in the skill menu. After each successful chain attack, you are given a chance to perform another. Your opponent cannot attack you while you are chaining attacks together. Each chain attack you perform must be different from the previous one. There is no limit to the number of attacks that may be chained together, but the chain symbol appears for a shorter period of time with each success of attack. If you attempt a chain attack before the chain symbol appears, it tells you with practice, though, you'll be able to chain many attacks together. I wonder if that works on, like, boss-style enemies, too, because them not being able to do anything at all is seems awfully powerful, you know? One more thing to remember. Wielding a faster weapon makes performing chain attacks easier. It may be to your advantage to equip a faster weapon that does less damage if it enables you to chain more attacks together. We were too slow. Okay, so... Too slow again. Okay. Chain added blow. Too fast. Okay. This probably doesn't help that I'm playing through the OBS window right now. <laughs> it would probably be a little bit easier if I was playing through the regular uh, game screen here. Uh, it's too bad. I would love to save you, but I, I actually can't. Here lies Greyhors, the village Hayward. Yep, I realize that. I would actually like to attack that dude. We can't. Okay, we can talk to Leiko. Leiko's face turns dark with hatred. Oh, it's you, Joseph. What curse have you brought to Masad? Villain sorcerer, I'd split your brain pan myself if I could. Over here, the farmer shouts at the top of his lungs. The boy is over here. He has the mark. How freaking rude, man. Wow. Okay, so we can chain push. Oh, okay, so that was that was pretty quick. Ah, okay. Well, too fast on that last one. Okay, so we got a few in there though. I don't know if it's really necessary to do that right now with these these early game enemies here, but it's uh it's something that we can do. Can we talk to you again? Will you say anything different now that we killed the guard? Nope. Okay, that's fine. Let's just keep running around. Not really sure where we're meant to be going, but we'll just keep going around, killing all of the scouts that are destroying our land here. And uh, see what's going to happen. So, is there any downside to failing a chain? It doesn't appear to be... There may be one that the game just hasn't told us about, but best I can tell, it seems like you should pretty much always just be trying to do chain attacks. It said something about using up AP, but, like, our AP is full over on the left there. I don't know if that's just... So what if we... So if we don't do anything, right, if we don't try to touch anything, like, do any of the chain attacks, does it just go back and forth with the attacks? It's kind of what it's looking like. It's looking like I get one, they get one, I get one, they get one. But if I fail a chain attack, best I can tell, it still kind of just respects the turn order. 
So I guess there's, right? So we're not gonna touch anything yet. I go, he goes. I go, he goes. Okay, I'm going to intentionally like... Okay, too slow, too fast, but I still got my attack. So yeah, we still got our attacks. Maybe it made me a little more vulnerable to being hit. Because it, it did appear as if I got hit more when I was messing up the chain attacks than I did when I wasn't messing up the chain attacks. So maybe we uh, our defenses are dropped or something whenever we screw that up. That would make sense. A decent way to balance it, it would seem. We got a barn that we can go in. Very cool. Is there anything in here? There is someone we can talk to. We can talk to Madra. Madra? Don't know who that is. Some woman, it looks like. Shh, the Rennies are about. I hear the rattle of their swords. They'll kill you all one by one, but they'll not find my hiding place. Your hiding place? Yes, and it's mine. I was here first, lad, so go away. You can't hide here, too. There's room enough for one and one only. You'll get us both killed. Where should I go, then? Lenale. Go to Lenale, behind the walls of the King City. You'll find sanctuary there. The knights and lords of Mediva will protect you. How do I get there? That's your problem, lad, not mine. Wow, you can't even give me directions, lady? But here, take this vial with you. A swig of this tonic will heal your wounds if the Rennies get a piece of you. Got another healing tonic. Very cool. Can we steal a horse? Doesn't look like it. Very well. Uh, and I don't believe we can enter houses or do anything like that. The Laughing Monk. Is that a... Is that an inn? That sounds like the name of an inn. Did we fight this dude earlier? Are they respawning? Or maybe this isn't someone we fought already. Too slow. Oh. Chain added. Push him back. Too fast. So we did zero damage there whenever we went too fast. Is that a thing? Just to reach experience level two. Experience is gained by defeating enemies and completing quests. When enough experience points have been accumulated, Joseph will attain the next experience level. Each time Joseph levels up, his maximum HPs and APs increase. He also gets skill points that can be used to improve his skills. A flashing plus symbol appears on Joseph's portrait if he has skill points to distribute. To distribute skill points, press triangle and choose the skills option from the menu. Alright, cool. That's a pretty standard affair here. From this screen, you can distribute skill points to skills that Joseph has available. On the right-hand side of the screen is the full list of skills that are at his disposal. By scrolling up or down, you can select them. This goes into a little bit too much detail with how to do everything. This tutorial is a little too hand-holdy here. I-M-O. Uh, pressing X raises the selected skill by one point. No skill level can be higher than the character's current experience level. Oh, that's a kind of neat mechanic. Skill point assignments are permanent, so make sure you choose wisely before pressing X. Um... Okay, well, I mean, we have... How many skill points do we have? Two? I think... I mean, dodging and being better with weapons seems both very nice. Increased chance to chain attack. Increased chance chain attack for next attack? Uh, what? <laughs> Gain access to higher levels heal spells? Okay. I mean, that there will probably come in handy at some point, but for now, I think I would rather just be able to kill people faster and dodge more. Dodge more better. That all looks good to me, I suppose. I want to go to the Laughing Monk, man. But the game won't let me. It's very rude in that regard. All right, let's try out our... We're level two now. We're going we're gonna to kill you faster. Or just miss with all of our attacks. Aha! You missed as well. We are too slow. Chain attack. Chain attack. Very nice. And you dropped something this time. Ten gold coins. Very nice. Can you imagine if you actually just found ten gold coins laying around in real life? Like, gold is some expensive stuff, man. Like, just ten random coins would be a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I would happily take 10 gold coins if I found them lying on the road somewhere. That would actually be amazing. Just keep running around the town here. I don't see any other people, so I guess we just gotta try to kind of find our way out of the town here. One way or another. 
we are not taking any hits. So here's a wall. It did say something about going behind the king's wall. I don't think this is the wall to a keep, though. It certainly doesn't look to be one. It's a little too uh, too short and thin for, for that, I would think. Yeah, okay, so whenever we do chain push, it seems like the timing gets off a little bit. I'm guessing because of the whole it giving us more time to chain a thing. All right, that was too slow. That was that was definitely too slow. That's fair. That was too fast. Uh, well, you know, one of these days we'll get it down. It reminds me a tiny bit... Excuse me. It reminds me a tiny bit of the mechanics in the original Witcher game with the, the timing. It's just in that game you had, like, the, the audio visual, visual cue on when to do your attacks. In this game, it doesn't seem to give you any of those cues. Just, uh... Just kind of, you have to look for the... I mean, I guess it gives you a visual cue, but the visual cue is very quick to disappear. Again, though, maybe if I wasn't playing through OBS with the additional couple frames of lag, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. But yeah, once you get the timing down, I, I can definitely see how that would be powerful. And I'm still curious on how that's going to work with boss-type enemies. Here lies Bars, a village farmer. It's weird how we can examine some of the dead people on the ground and not others. I guess maybe they didn't want to name all of the characters, but wanted to have some to give the village a little bit of flavor. Very nice. Another one bites the dust. Nah, nah. Uh, okay. I mean, might as well just kill everybody. We have, like, full health. I don't I don't see any reason not to attack everybody that we see dotted about here. I powerful. Hey, we're level 3 already. That seems good. Um, so I'll tell you what. I, I feel like this is probably the wrong thing to do. But at this point in time, I don't see any reason not to just keep putting stuff into sword and dodge. I'm guessing push, I don't really understand what the increased chance chain attack for next attack. I'm guessing that means it gives us more of a window to do that. So, man, I wish I had the manual for this game. This is one of the few games I have that didn't come with a manual, just case. Uh, I, uh, you know what, let's do it. Screw it, why not? It's too late, we already pressed X button, and as it said earlier, it is permanent. Once you put a point in, you cannot take it out, so we're going to have to just uh, deal with that, I suppose. Hopefully that doesn't end up being a huge mistake. I don't think it'll be. Making the chain attacks a little bit easier to do seems like a good idea, and as of now, at least with these beginning enemies, um, we are dodging pretty easily. Of course, now that I've gotten that, I'm having more trouble <laughs> doing the attacks than I was before. Hey, we got some leather boots. Can we equip that, maybe? Is that something that would be good for us? Ah, well, we're wearing no boots at all. So, yes, we definitely will. Uh, they're worth 20 gold coins. They offer three protection and have a speed of one. These boots offer minimal protection for the wearer's feet. Imagine that. I didn't know that's what boots did. I'm glad the game told me so. Very cool how large of a landscape we're on. I wonder if it's going to remain to be kind of open like this, or if it's going to switch over to more like a level-based design, but each level just happens to be very large. Little little uh, curious about that. We've definitely missed a lot of area, but a lot of that's probably space we can't get to. Let's go ahead and see what it's like to fight two people at a time. I know... Oh, too slow. Good job. GG me. I know we can kind of... Okay. So whenever it switches from one to the next, it doesn't automatically keep the chain going. Another worn katana. We can't do anything with that, really. I mean, we can equip it, I guess, but it's slower and less powerful than what we're currently using, so doesn't seem to be any point in it. There's the water's edge, so we can't really go any further this way. I think through that gate up top in the wall is probably where we need to go to get to the next area. But I, uh, I have a problem. I have to explore whenever I am in a new world like this. 
as I've mentioned before, I am playing through Final Fantasy VII Remake, and that is one of the things I'm trying to do a little bit better with that, is just not worry about exploring as much, because I've already explored through that world. Um, that's weird. It seems like my bot might be down. There may be some problems with chat at the moment. Um, hmm. Yeah, very strange. But anyways, uh, yeah, I'm trying to do a little bit better with just trying to get through the game a bit because I've already played through the game before. Whenever we reach the boat, the Rennies are guarding. Why should I leave Masad? This is my home. Lala? Okay, well, this dude apparently has information, so let's talk to you. Joseph, you must leave Masad at once. The soldiers are looking for you. The guards... They guard the king's highway, so the river is your only hope. The miller has a boat. Cross the bridge to the mill, but watch out for Rennies. Neat Alistair. Yeah, I mean, it's working for you. I mean, the chat seems to be working. It's weird that the bot isn't working, though. Or maybe I... Yeah, the, uh, the Streamlabs bot doesn't seem to be working at the moment. So I'm not sure what's up with that. But uh, chat seems to be working in general, at least. So that's good. Uh, anyway, so, the river. Sail up the Daru to Lendali, where the king of Mediva holds court. You'll be safe within its walls, and doesn't your friend Yago live there? Who is Yago? <laughs> the Vagagon, vagabond who came to Masad with you all those years ago. He said if you ever need his help, find him in Lendali. You're in terrible danger, Joseph, but how will that beggar save you? Soldiers? These aren't raiders or brigands. Look at their armor. Look at their swords. These are Oranian Ori soldiers, Joseph. Minions of the Emperor. They're burning down the village. And why are they looking for me? Lahara, take me if I know. They're looking for a peasant with a mark on his hand, just like the mark you've got. What would they want with you? What are Rennies? I saw one big as my cottage down by the mill. His hammer will take your head off, lad. So they're just larger soldiers or something like that? And Orania lies far to the north, beyond the deep waters of the Kadim. I've heard only the stories of traitors and savages and blood drinkers ruled by the sorcerer Marad. Farewell. Quest journal updated. So, I haven't actually looked at the quest journal yet. And So, find Yago. A sick of villager Masad has asked us to give the sword to whoever. So, that's uh, it's exactly what it says it is. It's just a journal with the, the various things that we've been asked to do in it, which is fine by me. Um, we can attack another scout. I kind of wanted to go back up into the village and see if we could go through that that one area in the, the, the town wall there. Did you? You didn't drop anything it doesn't look like. And this circles back around to... Oh, no, wait. This isn't somewhere we've been before. Cloth gloves, very nice. Get some protection on our hands. Uh, not skills, but that's all right. We can just flip through everything here. So we don't have any gloves on yet, so we'll definitely equip that. And keep going. Okay, the road appears to be blocked that way, so nothing over there we can do. Can we go up this giant hill? We can, surprisingly. Kind of thought it would be too steep, but I suppose not. This should take us right back into town, right? And then the wall is back this way. Yeah, there it is. So wasn't there a break in the wall that we could try to go through? It was guarded, but... I mean, we're level 3 adventurers. We should be fine. Uh, maybe drop a save real quick, though. <laughs> Just to be on the safe side. Space available, a bunch. Space required, a little. Cool. New save game. <laughs> it's kind of cool that it actually shows you how much space is available and whatnot. I feel like a lot of games don't do that, but... I could have just overlooked it as well. Who knows? Okay, so you there. Uh, and sadly, it looks like the gate here is actually blocked off. I thought that wooden texture from a distance. I thought maybe that was just the, the texture of a gate. But no, it is a broken apart carts, and Lord knows there's no way for a poor uh, vagabond such as myself to climb around broken pieces of carts. That would be impossible. So, <laughs> all right. So I guess we just have to cross the river and do as we were told. I suppose. 
found revive scroll? What? I didn't even know we could uh, examine that. I just kind of was running past. I was randomly pressing X, though, to see if anything would pop up for us to interact with. So I'm guessing that's how we uh, ended up examining that. We got some more leather boots, but we already have some equipped, so no reason to worry about that. Just some junk for us to sell, presumably whenever we get to town. Such things will be available to us. Hearts are very high, hard to climb, you know? I mean... Are they, though? <laughs> okay, we can talk to other random people. They don't have important information, I don't believe, but... So tired of plowing and sowing and reaping. If the soldiers don't kill us, the winter will. The granaries burn like funeral pyres, and Nato's Hill is still ablaze. Lenely is the city of gods, Joseph. I'll be a merchant and sail the Daru, or I'll journey across the Sea of Kadim, but I won't leave without Yuvala. If she won't go, neither will I. And Yuvala is this lady over here, I believe. Can we, like, talk them into leaving? If it's not war, it's the plague. If it's not the plague, it's a drought. Or rain rots the wheat in the field. I give my offerings at the shrine, but the gods are never pleased. Nothing to do but bury the dead and endure. Such is our lot to reap and thresh, to scrub and mend, to gather wood and tend the fire. I feed the pigs and the cows and the chickens, and now we'll have no food for winter. That sucks, man. Why not just leave the town? <laughs> like, <laughs> didn't we just talk about Lenely being a possible place for everybody to go where the king would help or whatever? You could try that. Just saying. I'm guessing this is a boss battle by how dramatic everything's being all of a sudden. Ah, oh, this is the, the Rennie or whatever. The dude with the hammer. Alright, we're level three. We got some dodge. We got some push. <laughs> we got we got some skill with a sword. Oh, he's just a he's just a barbarian, and we were we were way too slow there. Ooh, ten damage. Another ten damage. Okay, yeah. So he's he's pretty reasonably strong. It feels like he's doing a bit more damage to us than we're doing to him. But if we could get the chain down, then we'll be fine. And look at that. Already dead. And he was carrying around 30 gold. Very nice. And some studded boots. We will definitely take a look at that. Nope, easy guy. Yeah, yeah, very easy. <laughs> Honestly, it wasn't too hard. Value 300 gold points. Very nice. Protection of 10. Skill required heavy arms 1. These boots offer very good protection for the wearer's feet. But we cannot uh, equip them because we do not have the heavy armor skill. Is there a way for us to attain that skill eventually? I do not know. Um, I mean, let's keep making ourselves better with the sword, I suppose. I see no reason not to. Uh, we haven't yet really found that we need a lot of healing spells, so I'm not going to worry about putting points into that just yet. Uh, instead, we are going to keep making our dodge skill better. Because the more we dodge, the less damage we take, and that is, uh, that's that. Okay, so, it's weird. We can't, like, inspect individual barrels and things, but it seems little groups like that we can. Having eluded the Orenians, Joseph sailed to Lanel, where he hoped to find the old beggar named Iago. In the tongue of the ancient Runari, Lanel means City of Gods. But upon this site, the towers of Iliosi stood. Now, Lanel was capital of Mediva, seat of King Belius VI, Descendant of the victors of the Medivan Conquest. Very cool. A little bit of backstory for why Linnell is called what it is. In the old tongue, it means City of the Gods, apparently. Which also explains why that one random person called it as such. Okay, so this is the overworld here, I suppose. Very uh, Final Fantasy-esque with the low resolution big overworld to explore and then the massive kind of uh individual levels or i say massive a lot of the final fantasy ones weren't massive but uh and random encounters as well on the overworld very well i am fine with that as a jrpg lover i have no problem with encounters unless they all take this long to load <laughs> if that's the case that could get pretty old pretty quick um Okay. 
I see why it took so long to load. This is a fairly large area here. And what are these? Are these like weird bug creatures? Uh, brown basite? 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 I have no idea how to pronounce that, but too slow. Sorry, we, we got them dodges. There is like no, like very little music and sound effects, which feels a little weird <laughs> in this, this big uh, random battle sequence here. Too fast, okay. We gotta, we gotta work on our timing a bit. There's one, there's two. Uh, for some reason that one didn't trigger. There's one, there's two, it didn't. Oh, that's right, each one has to be different from the last. That's what I'm screwing up. That's right, I forgot about that. That's why it wasn't working. Okay, so we gotta go up, and then go right, and then go up, and then go right, and then go up, <laughs> and then we can just kinda keep this going forever. Yeah, look at that, look at that. That is way too powerful. We got its tail. Is that something that we want to be collecting? <laughs> Info. Uh, so I'm guessing it's just junk to sell, but it's worth 74 gold pieces, so why not? Attack another brown besiet, besite. I, I wish there was a pronunciation guide because I have no idea. What if we, we can try the left? Confusion. We confused him. He is so confused now. He has no idea what's going on. If we just... Ah, uh, did we screw it up? We must have screwed it up. Chain push. This this chain mechanic seems a little OP, man. I imagine they probably balanced the game for ch the 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 idea that people would be able to chain pretty effectively. And getting attacked on multiple sides here is uh, a little scary, to be honest. I, I hope powerful. this one dies here soon. It did, and we leveled up as well, which in this game, like so many others, means that we are now healed. So, no problem there. Too fast, that's okay. We don't need to do the desperation attack at all, because we haven't really lost all that much health. I'm going to do it just to see if it looks any different or anything, or at least try to do it, if I can get my chain going. Okay, well, it added a, a neat little flare there. I don't know if it was really necessary, but... Alright, so I mean, the chain's gotta end at some point. I mean, I guess technically if you were, like, perfect at this game, you could probably keep it going forever, but we are not that good at this game. So... <laughs> Alright, so crossing the yellow line, it seems like that will take us into the loading zone and probably back out into the overworld. Gotta add the flash, yeah. Gotta add little, little flair, little excitement to the combat, eh? Uh, so we want to go into skills. Let's just keep pumping that sword up there. Oh, we unlocked the ability to use staff weapons. But, of course, we don't have any staff weapons yet, so I don't really see the need for that. I do see the need to be able to heal popping up relatively soon, I feel like. But, as of now, if we just keep putting points in dodge, then... Like, because we're not taking that much damage. Stuff started to get a little sticky whenever we were fighting two of these guys. But I think we'll be okay. Hopefully the other ones over there don't catch wind of the fight and come running over. Too fast on that one. Ah, and we took a hit. Trash. All them points into dodge and we're still taking hits like... Like a... Well, like a vagabond, I suppose. <laughs> Are we, it looks like we're doing a little bit more damage whenever we actually hit. He's still dodging a fair bit, but I saw an 11 pop up, which is the most I've ever seen before. Oh, 14. Nice. So it appears a 17 that time. Okay, so we're doing some pretty decent damage here and there. It seems like this uh, probably uses a D&D like system for how damage works. Because it appears as though it's all like dice roll based, right? Sometimes we do damage, sometimes we don't. Uh, there may be stuff to find if we were to explore all the way down around there, but I do not think I want to spend the time doing that for just a random encounter here. So we're going to exit on out to the world map. Just get out of this area. There may be like cool collectibles or something to find. I don't really know. 
All I know is that I am trying to get somewhere. Can we access the map here? We can, but it doesn't really tell us like which way we're going or anything. So that's fine though. We got a revive scroll. When did we pick that up? Value 150 has one resurrect charge, a scroll inscribed with the revive spell. Very cool. I'm assuming that's an item we can use then to heal our fallen comrades uh, whenever we obtain some. I wish we could put the camera down a little bit so it wasn't quite so high up. It'd be nice to be able to see off in the distance. All right, so they said something about... Okay, so yeah, here's Lenali. I was going to say they said something about following the river, so I saw a river and just thought, hey, maybe we can follow that to find Lenali, but... Uh, funnily enough, it's right there. <laughs> so I guess it wasn't really all that far away. We just kind of picked the wrong direction to travel. Yeah, let's pop into the outskirts, though, and see what is going on in here. If there is anything of import. Wonder if the bot is working yet. Yeah, there we go. Stream is on a quest to collect and try every PS2 game released in the United States. That's what I wanted to pop up earlier. I guess uh, there's been some problems with Amazon Web Services uh, yesterday. Maybe that's carrying over to today or something. So we found a spice merchant, eh? So I wait like a fool for the ships to come in. I've heard they might sail the fleet to the west and come over land, but the caravan won't get here until winter. Well, that sounds bad. I hope the food stores are pretty decent here in town. What else do we got? You are a sewer cleaner. Okay. <laughs> oh, lighty lord of manure, I bid you welcome. Here you'll find the architectural marvel of all the ages, the catacombs of Muck, the royal depository, the glorious sewers of Lanelli, or Lanel, I think is how they pronounce it, right? Can we fight the rat? Nope. Can we, can we search? We can search boxes. Uh, do we get in trouble for, like, stealing or anything? Doesn't seem like it. So, oh, you're a wool merchant. Do you have anything interesting to say? Lahara take these lords. Every bridge and port demands its share. They bleed us dry with their tolls, and now I have to pay again. I mean, they gotta pay for the bridges and stuff too, somehow, bro. Uh, okay, we can go down here. Ah, this dude's got something to say, huh? Durgon the sailor. What am I going to do? The captain says we must leave Lanel, but I would not get in a boat without my lucky charm. Your lucky charm? An earring given to me by a spirit on the Sea of Kadim. I lost it in a game of chance with a gambler named I Ivis. Ivis? If you get it back for me, I'll reward you. Very well. Okay, so if we find Ivis, we should talk to him, and maybe we will get a reward of some kind. I mean, we should definitely. Welcome to Linnell, your grace. His majesty has been expecting you. Wait, me? The nobleman dismisses you with a scornful gesture step aside peasant make way for earl of Cobb. oh okay so not me the other guy press gang leader there's another he'll do nicely too old to fight him of no use to the king okay so these are just some uh gang members i guess beggars infest the old cities worse than rats and rats don't beg for gold let the vermin fight for the king i say let them be arrow fodder Okay, <laughs> seems like a, a nice bloat. And you are the wool merchant. We talk to you. I forget myself. Can we examine things? We can. We found 20 gold. You, are you a child? You're an apprentice. An apprentice of what? Leave me alone, plowman. I have errands to run for my mas master, and if I'm late, he'll kick and starve me until I'm dead. Wow, bro, chill. He's just a kid, man. I would like a word with your master, if possible. Um, ooh, ooh, somebody's got info. A couple somebody's got info. To Belon and good wife, huh? Now let's talk to Belon. Greetings, adventurer. Are you interested in a task for which you'll be well rewarded? Uh, perhaps, if you tell me more. I have a bag of magical seeds that must be delivered to the stronghold of the Kosani. What kind of magical seeds? The seeds of our... They, <laughs> they are called... The they will sprout anywhere, even on solid rock. And what is it I have to do? Take this bag to one they call Elrar. Elrar? Uh, you'll find him in the stronghold of Savanara. Savan Sa Sanavar? 
he will reward you. I, these words, I will pay 2,000 gold for the safe delivery of the seeds. Will you do this? Uh, sure. I am much obliged. Here are the seeds. LR is well known, so you have no problem finding him. Gained item seeds. Cool. I guess. Wait, do you have more info or? Nope. Okay. But there was another over here. Crazy Ivan, eh? Why do they call you Crazy Ivan? Arg burf derple their spedum red badoo. <laughs> uh, nope. Is it Burbat joked Rivim ox cart? Could you repeat that? Lolo on our tre treasure. Henwith odd. Mr. Noodle with the five bitch here. Thank you so much, Mr. Noodle. So I'm, I'm assuming he's actually saying something, but like you probably need to decode it somehow or maybe get drunk enough to understand him. I don't know. <laughs> Apafa Aqueduct, the Hava uh, Cheeto. <laughs> <laughs> Big delicious. <laughs> it burp bird in O Loto. It's been nice talking with you, fellow. McKish fish. Wait, that actually gave us a quest? What kind of quest did we get for that? Quest journal. Uh Crazy Ivan. Near the Lanella docks, you met Crazy Ivan who speaks only in gibberish, and that's all we need to know about that, apparently. Very well. Uh, no, I don't want to talk to the water carrier. I wanted to examine the boxes. Does not appear we can examine these boxes. Can we maybe go up these stairs and talk to this fish dude? Fishmonger. Buy your fish here, plowman. Brave captain told him, wrestle the legions of Amasido so that you might have a tasty dinner. Ah. It didn't it didn't let me buy a fish. I wanted I wanted to buy a fish from him. Oh, nope. I want to examine. Hey, a recovery tonic. Very nice. We will always take more items. Even if we can't use them, we can always sell. So, uh, it's going to say this looks like an interesting area. An arms merchant. Very cool. If you're looking for a blade, don't you have a bloody inch? Move a bloody inch, Kafug. I got what you need right here. Oh, okay. So, we can actually buy and sell stuff here. Very nice. So, here's a staff. We have unlocked the ability to use them. I'm assuming anything in white is stuff that we can use. Anything in red is the stuff we cannot. And we also should be able to sell, right? Yep. Worn Katana. Might as well sell both of them. See no reason to keep them around. We don't have very much gold at the moment. So no need to buy anything, I don't think. But can we get info? We can. Damage 40 with lower speed. Uh, the Falchion does... 32 damage with an extra bit of speed and the bastard sword i did not want to try to buy that's okay does 45 but slow and the short is what we're using i believe so very well and what are you are you a arms merchant as well no you are carcella drago has a clever plan clever plan you say it's a secret i promised i wouldn't tell <laughs> okay that's uh <laughs> You're doing a good job of not letting anybody in to the fact that you got something going on. With my little boat, I'll sail up north and fight the Rennies. One volley from their cannons, you'd be food for the fish. Every man must do his part. I'm old, but my sons are strong. Okay. I, uh, don't really know what's going on there, but... feel it has nothing to do with me. Can't seem to examine anything here, so, uh... Yeah, I feel maybe we should try and go to the gates of the king they've been raiding so can we can we go into the town because right now we're just on the outskirts right so we probably need to try and go into the town of proper uh we cannot fit through there that's fine maybe if we talk to this guy is this an entrance over here no that's that's the guy we talked to here we are all the stone columns, the big doors, surely this is the way inside. And with nobody to talk to, I guess we can just go right in. There's a lot more to this game than I expected. Like, I, I expected it to be just a relatively simple kind of deal, right? Just from, like, seeing how cheap I picked it up for and the box and whatnot, 
I thought it'd be a lot smaller adventure than it appears to be, but there's a lot of, at least so far, a lot of side quests and little nooks and crannies to explore, things to see and stuff to do. So this may actually be pretty decent. The combat system is the only thing that's kind of, uh, leaves me wanting more at the time. It seems really fun. Yeah, it's not too bad. Like I said, the, the combat system uh, seems a bit uh, simple, maybe, but once we unlock more characters to, to join us, that could certainly change. And I'm assuming once we find our, our other dude there, that uh, maybe he'll join us up. Yasad and Kafug, let me shiv you a wide smirk. Come here. <laughs> Why don't you? Afraid of the Ricks, huh? Afraid of the Saurus? Shivy and the dumb. <laughs> okay. Cool. Nothing to examine. I do wish that, like, it would pop up and show you what you can and can't examine. That would be a handy little thing indeed. Who are you? My name is Jakar. Do you remember now? Yes, I remember. To think I once called you friend. Have you forgotten what happened at Siran? I tried to save our village. Save our village? You destroyed it. You killed everyone. You burned our cottages to the ground. That demon destroyed Quran, not I. You used a ring and summoned the demon, the ring that Yago gave you. You couldn't control your power, and so our people died. Yeah, well, I threw that ring down a well. So, <laughs> you should have thrown yourself in after it. Why are you here? Have you come to destroy Linnell? Uh, wow. Yeah, I mean, like, so from my understanding, everybody was being murdered anyways in the raid, right? So, like... Sure, I, I didn't necessarily help, but, like, is what I did any worse? I don't... I don't know, man. I'm looking for Yago, that old spider. I've seen him. I've cut him in half, but I'm now a soldier in the king's army. If he ever falls from royal favor, my axe will be waiting. Where is he? Fate is cruel. They call him Lord Yago, and he's a counselor of Prince Sorn Nahan. When he came to the city, he was begging in the gutters. Now he lives in the royal palace with the king and queen. You could go to the palace and ask him yourself, but I doubt the guard would let a cotter like you through the front. Peasant surf villain, plowboy farmer, pick a name that pleases you if you don't like cotter. Uh, if he ever sees me outside the walls of the King City, you'll have a vengeance. Okay, so this dude does not like us because he's from our hometown. That is fair, I suppose. Um, there's probably... I mean, in games like this, I, I imagine that there will be some random people without markers above their head that will probably give us some sort of mission or items or something but as of now i do not feel like talking to literally every individual um normally i would but in the interest of trying to keep things moving i am going to hold off on that uh, okay so any hint here the vagabond who taught you how to use your summoning power yago is now prince or uh, counselor and he lives in the royal palace so i mean the royal quarters may be the right way to go but is there an area that's just called palace maybe <laughs> like maybe across this fanciful bridge here i wish we could move the camera down that would be handy and in the map so uh it doesn't show you what the connecting areas are called because obviously on the other side of the bridge we found that is called the royal district or whatever it'd be nice if the map was properly labeled in that regard ah iris joseph i heard the rennies attacked mahad have you come to join the king's army i have a sword for you that sword belonged to my ancestor he died on nato's hill fighting for lord falcon eye if you are giving me this sword my uncle asik must be dead too take my weapon joseph i no longer have need of it and the bastard's sword. We looked at a bastard sword from the shopkeep out front. I forget if it was any better than what we were using. So our current sword is 35 with a speed of 1. The bastard sword I did not mean to equip, but is 45 with a speed of 0.67. So the, the game straight told us that it's usually better to have a faster weapon. Now maybe if the damage difference was greater... Maybe I would try switching, but uh, I do not feel the need to switch for just 10 extra damage. Not whenever we're losing 33 speed. 
Yeah, you can't really see off in the distance all that well, can you? Alright, so this is another area over here, which is the Crown District. Is that the same as the other district? I think it is. Maybe we should go to the Crown District. We're gonna we're gonna move around to the next loading zone and see what that one's called. I'm hoping that we can just find like the palace or something at some point. That would certainly be handy. Oh, we got a couple a couple people here. We got a smithy. Have you come to buy my wares then? Maybe. So you make weapons. And just weapons, it appears. Excuse me for one moment. <coughs> Actually, this seems like a uh, great time for a short break. So why don't we go ahead and switch over to the break screen while I stand up and stretch and uh, take a drink and do all of that good stuff. So whoever gets all the power gems gets the theme park. And rid ourselves of the bandicoots all at the same time. Not so fast. I'm Pasadena Opossum. I'm racing for old Von Clutch, and I'm gonna whoop you. That's for sure. So if I I mean, you'll have like the deed to this amusement. I kind of like that there's a story to the game, right? Like it's nice, but I don't know. Like, <laughs> this is kind of, kind of dumb, you know? I mean, I guess it's better than, like, Mario Kart or something that doesn't have one at all. But it's also just kind of, it feels a little shoehorned in. Like, a little unnecessary. I guess they were just going, like, for the very lighthearted sort of deal with it, you know? With the ridiculous characters and... All of the, the the premise obviously being a bit whatever. So I mean in, in that sense, you know, I guess it uh, I guess it kinda makes sense. Are we actually entering the theme park now? But yeah, on the uh the, the PS5 note though, man. So yeah, I got it. I like I said, I played it a bit. I haven't got to play it a whole lot. But uh I've still I've got it, I've had some fun with it. I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy VII on it. Um, because Final Fantasy VII, one of my favorite games, uh, uh, the original at least, and I played the remake on the PS4, but there's a free PS5 upgrade, so I've been playing that, and, uh, I don't know if anybody out there has played the PS4 remake of Final Fantasy VII, but there's a very common problem where some textures don't appear, the most obvious one being the door to Cloud's apartment is just not textured, like, at all for some reason, <laughs> And, like, it's such a well-known problem. I don't know why they never fixed it, but they didn't. Square just kind of ignored it. So, anyways, the PS5 remake, though, it finally fixes it, man. That alone made it worth buying a PS5, you know? <laughs> All right. Let's get back into it. While I was uh, up stretching around, getting my legs loosened up a bit and all that, I took a look at the back of the box, and it says that the game spans two continents. So it seems to be a fairly large world indeed. Um, obviously, we haven't explored the whole continent that we are currently on, so it could end up being fairly small. But I imagine two continents would be, you know, a fair bit of space. Clutching the tools of his trade in his bony hands, the wiry old man squints at you. No better remedy for these dark times than a lantern made by Chris, master of the fraternity of lantern makers. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a thing, I guess. Fancy lanterns are available. I imagine that will come in handy at some point since that dude did have the double exclamation points above his head. Mercer the Tailor. Alas, good sir, say a red-faced shopkeep. I cannot serve you today. I have just been robbed and my shop is closed. You were robbed? Yes, a customer bought fine silk garments and, pair for, and paid for them in what seemed to be gold coins. Ooh, we got a counterfeiter on our hands. The coins were base lead with a thin coating of gold. The cursed thief, I am ruined. With my best clothing stock on and no gold to buy more, I cannot stay in business. Well, who is this thief, good sir? He goes by the name of Serval. If you were to find him and return what he stole, I would reward you well. Did we meet a Serval at some point? I feel as though we did, did we not? 
Hmm. Not gonna worry about it now, mostly because I am trying to get to the next party member. I did also see while I was reading the back of the box that y indeed you do get uh, multiple party members to fight alongside you all in real time. Uh, five of them, it seems, from what I've read on the back of the box. I don't know if you get more than five, but it seems to be five is the most at any single time that you can use at least. Greetings, sir. Bibris the bookkeep at your service. Bookkeep bookseller. I imagine some of these shops and things will open up to us more as we progress through the story. And we got another sewer cleaner. I would actually like to talk to the armor if at all possible. I craft the finest armor in Linnell, but supplies are scarce and the king's men need their mail. I do have a few odds and ends I could part with if you have the gold to pay. Steel hilled boots, studded leggings, round shield, and a buckler. Nothing that we can afford, nor can we wear at the moment, because we can only wear light gear as of now, it would seem. So, what is across this bridge? To arms, son of the Runar, whatever. The old city. No, I think probably the royal district is where we want to go. So, the bard is singing a tale, it would seem. We are not interested at the time being, though. The way he said Wolf Killer, though, for some reason made me think of The Witcher. I don't think it's actually related in any way, but, you know. The Witcher wasn't even, you know, the Wolf Killer, but he was the White Wolf, so... <laughs> Close enough, eh? Let's, uh, okay, so I think right around here was another passage to the old town there. Hey, Mr. Noodle with another 5-bit cheer. I appreciate you, love. Always donating a little bit of money here and there. It helps out a lot. Thank you. Another loading screen as we go into the next area, and that is the perfect time to take a drink, which is something I forgot to do while getting up and stretching earlier. Important to stay hydrated. I better appreciate you. I do. I appreciate you tons. You are the best. And I love you, Mr. Noodle. Alright, so we are in the Royal District. I would imagine... Or the Crown District, I guess, is what they called it. And I would imagine the Crown District would be closer, at least, to the Royal Palace. Which, presumably, would lead closer to our... Uh, well, I'd call him friend, but I'm not really sure we would call him a friend at this point, considering we told him that we wanted nothing to do with him after casting our ring down a well, the ring that he gave us. But around here somewhere, <laughs> the streets of Linnell, presumably we will find some sort of clue on which way to go. I see a wall, and going higher usually means getting closer to the rich people. Okay, we got a couple guards. Do they speak? Ah, oh, the palace guards, so there we go. These gates lead to the royal palace and the temple of your wrath. You, make, you may worship at the temple and make your offerings, but the palace is under heavy guard by order of the prince. Yes, I would actually like to speak to the prince if possible. Um... Or at least the, the counselor to the, 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 the priest? No, <laughs> to the prince. He's an old friend of mine, you see. Not one that I care much for, but he uh, could help me in these trying times. Temple of what now? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I already forget what it said, to be honest with you. <laughs> Temple guard. Solemn and silent, the guard does not answer. Okay. Okay. Cool deal. Uh, got some really fancy waterworks going on here. Look at that, man. Whole man-made waterfall over here. Very nice. I'm assuming the temple would be up higher here. Or not the temple, the, uh, the palace would be up higher here. But uh, I'm assuming actually we've only come closer to the temple itself. Your wrath. <laughs> Urith? Urath? U-R-A-T-H? I don't know how the hell you would say that, but 
Urath seems Urath seems uh close enough to me. <laughs> Another loading screen as we go into the temple here. We got some fancy gates rising before us. And a beautiful temple here with a statue of a is that an angel meant to be maybe? We can talk to is this the head priest? The hierophant? Here, font. I am Frank of Mo Moano, Hierophant of the Urathi Priesthood. I am leader of the Order of Urath, sworn guardians of the eternal right. As long as one voice speaks the right, the mandate, or the world shall endure. This has been our mandate since the Aranu Geth. Words. Words are hard. Aranu Geth? You were joking, because when I first said it, it sounded like something else. What, your ass? The the temple of your ass? <laughs> the mosaics of the temple tell the story of the people I can't pronounce. The War of the Gods. Do you wish to hear it? Yeah, why not? Do you wish to learn about the first, second, or third of the word I cannot pronounce? Or would you rather learn about the death of your ass, son of the Sidani? Uh, let's hear about the death. So be it. Oh, is it gonna? Is it like a whole cutscene or something? Defeated once again, Nahara begged for mercy, and Urof relented. But then, as she embraced her brother, Nahara plunged a dagger in his back. Her minions fell upon him and tore the flesh from his bones. As Urof died. The winged Sudani fell from the sky, their god destroyed. The cities of glass shattered and became the Vahiomo, the sea of stars. This is how our people lost their wings at the dawning of the chaos of ten thousand years. Cool bit of world building. Um, I would love to hear more from you, but we don't have a whole lot of time left, and I really do want to find the gentleman that we are here to find. Um, it seems like that may be an area we can go to at some point, but not as of now. So we shall go back the way we came and hopefully find the palace. So the Temple Plaza. So this is not, I don't think, where we want to go. Although the guards led me to believe otherwise. Maybe I will need to speak to them again if we don't see the entrance to the palace here in the Temple uh, Plaza. That is some amazing background textures there. <laughs> Just, uh, that is blurred beyond belief. Ah, uh, early PS2 games. <laughs> it's just amazing to me, like, the difference between a game like this and then, you know, like, a Kingdom Hearts 2 or God of War or uh, anything along those lines. Just how different they all appear to be. Is this the way to the palace? Yes, you are palace guards. Palace guard does not respond very well. Can we enter the palace? These guards won't let me pass. Sadly, no. Okay. So, well, shoot. See, this is, oh, I think I may have found somebody important. They're surrounded by guards, Please, so. I beg of you, I must see Yago. That's Lord Yago to you, well. Then Lord Yago it is. I have urgent business. Business? What business? Will you sell him turnips? Has he borrowed your plow? <laughs> I come by his command. Stand aside and let me pass. Listen, peasant. You be on your way now. Yago is expecting me. Ask him. My name is- Irrelevant. Now go or I'll spill your blood on the palace gate. Rude ass guards. Some weird woman in a cloak. Surely she is What's going wrong, to help Grace? us in some way. Won't they let you in the palace? Huh? Who are you? Follow me. I know a way in. What are you talking about? Come on. I'll explain when we get there. The guards are watching. 
some random lady in a cloak telling us she knows a way into the palace. Doesn't seem fishy at all. Are we going through the sewers? So this is your way into the palace? Through the sewers? Yep. These tunnels date back to the city of gods. They'll take you anywhere in Linnell, if you know the way. I'm not going in there unless you tell me who you are and what you want. As you wish. My name is Felice. I work for Tancred. Tancred? The Prince of Beggars? Yeah, that's the one. Prince of Beggars and King of Fleas. How do I know you won't cut my throat down there or stick a knife in my back? Why should I even trust you? I wouldn't trust me if I were you, but you want to get in the palace and so do I. But why are you here? What do you want from me? There's something I need to get from the palace. But why are you helping me? Because I need your help. The sewers are dangerous. I can't risk it alone. Fair. You're making a mistake. I'm a farmer, not a warrior. But your need is as great as mine. Let's go. I mean, we've cut down multiple warriors on the way here, though. So, like, sure, we may just be a farmer. But obviously, we know our way around a sword. And at least, you know, well enough to handle ourselves. As we load into the sewers. I'm assuming these sewers are pretty large based on uh, how long it's taking to load here. My lord. Mr. Noodle's got a clock back in. Okay. Bye, love. Hope you have fun at work. <laughs> Fleece has now joined your party. When exploring, Fleece automatically follows you. During combat, Fleece attacks, defends, and uses special abilities based on her current instructions. You can change... Excuse me. Her instructions by pressing triangle and choosing the status option from the menu. The different instruction sets are explained in the manual, which I don't have. So that, uh, yeah, uh, there are special commands that you can now use with multiple characters in your party. Pressing L2 or R2 enables you to switch to the previous or next party member, respectively. You can also enter solo mode by pressing R1. When in solo mode, other party members will not follow you. And if you enter combat, they will not assist. However, if they are attacked, they will fight back. Fleece has access to more skills than Joe's has started with. Her thieving abilities allow her to pick locks and kick and backstab enemies. Press square to access the skills menu. Ah, very cool. Okay, so... Joseph here. Okay, so this is just showing us what we've put points into, essentially. She has her own points and things. Very well. And then we can switch between people here, it seems. Fleece has no spells. If we go into our skills menu here. So whichever character we're on is the one that we are currently controlling. That makes sense. She currently has on a cloth shirt, uh, which is fine, whatever. And a dagger, I suppose. Very strange looking dagger, but it inflicts moderate damage upon foes, eh? Uh, do we have anything that we could give you? It doesn't look like it. Revive, scroll, recovery, tonic, healing. Yeah, no. Doesn't appear to be. What were your... You have 8% magic resistance. Okay, and we can control the AI of each character or like party member individually. Very nice. So we can tell her to heal, cast, be a healer, caster, melee, or support. She was automatically put on support, so we'll go ahead and leave her on that, I think, for now. And then we will, of course, control... The main character here uh, looks like a big mech looking dude off to our side. He appears to be a little scary, but oh, he's a golem or a golem, however you want to pronounce it. The workers of the sewers are at your service. I am one of the last golems of brass. By order of King Perrin III, we were constructed to operate and maintain these sewers. One of the last, you say? The centuries have been cruel to us and our caretakers have forgotten how to repair us when we fail. A broken golem has lost its soul and has nothing more to live for. A broken golem is angry at the world. Avoid the broken golems, for they will do you harm. You shouldn't be able to see him yet, then? I don't know what you mean, Nate. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ugh, and you thought pigs smelled bad. Wait, are we walking through the, the shit right now? That's awesome. Uh, you know what? Can we Can we save here? Let's go ahead and save, 
And then we are going to see if these guys are as hard to deal with as we are tr being warned. I wonder. I mean, if they're made of brass, then you would think a sword wouldn't uh, do too much damage. But maybe they won't be so bad. Nice. Gotta build up that chain. Too slow. D&D &D reference for that wonderful Nat 1 on spot. Oh. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, for anybody who uh, is wondering, myself and Nate Alistair there are part of a group playing D&D &D together. And uh, there was a moment where a giant Warforge was walking past me and I somehow completely overlooked it because of a natural one that I rolled on a perception check. And then a series of poor rolls led to me constantly missing him throughout what we've played of the campaign. Oh, baby besite or besit or whatever the hell you want to call it. So this is the, the same as the thing earlier, just the baby form of it. So, I mean, it should go down pretty easily then, right? Okay, another downside to screwing up a chain. It seems like if we mess up the chain at least too fast on it, we, uh, we automatically miss our attack. If we're too slow, I don't think there's any sort of negative. Other than maybe it taking a little bit of powerful. extra time for the next attack to trigger. But couldn't pass up the chance to mention it. Yeah, I don't blame you, sir. Um, okay, we don't really need a heal, but we did level up. Okay, so we have unlocked a fair bit of new stuff here at this now. Uh, so, let's see. We unlocked the ability to parry. Increased chance to deflect incoming blows. So, kind of like dodge, but not quite. Um... You know what? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I do not know, to be honest. You know what? Honestly, what just happened? Did I did I accidentally use an ability there? <laughs> I must have accidentally used heal or something, or maybe it was an automatic thing. I don't know, but uh. We've been playing this for about an hour and a half. I'm going to, uh, I think after this next fight here, we are going to go ahead and call it on Summoner here. It's a game that I would definitely be willing to return to. It's not bad. I, I, I think it needs work, right? It's not perfect. And I assume that it was a relatively early game in the PS2's life cycle based off of what I've seen so far. But it's honestly, it's not too bad of a time. And considering I paid four bucks for it, I am not complaining at all. But, uh, yeah, before I dump my points into something that may not be a good idea, since I wouldn't mind returning to this someday, I think I want to do a little bit of research on the game. Hence why I think we're at a pretty decent spot to call it. Plus, now we also see how the party system works, and that's something I was really curious about as well. Which, uh, I mean, it's relatively simple. Uh, we can switch between the characters at any time. So there is that that we can do. Oh, her right is a desperation blow, not a, uh, whatchamacallit, not a, not a push. And then, of course, you gotta kick. But we can always change that if we wanted to. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and throw a save down here. Take a relatively short break just a minute or two while i switch over the games and everything and then we will be back to it but this time with lord of the rings the third age <laughs> 